Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the battle group preview for the 3rd Armoured Division. Please remember everything you are about to see is still in beta and therefore subject to change. So the 3rd Armoured is one of the divisions from the Back to War DLC. The Back to War DLC will be automatically available to everybody who owns Steel Division Normandy 44 and will possibly be available after release for those who do not. The 3rd Armoured is a very strong division at the moment and currently I have it set up for a Vanguard deployment type with a lot of aggression in Phase A. So starting in the Recon tab you can see that I have two cards of the M8 Greyhounds. They're going to be coming in at Phase A with no veterancy giving me 12 to work with in the early game. The M8s are really really nice at the moment. They're very very fast and they have a lot of firepower in both their machine guns and their main gun. Now this main gun is going to be reduced to 70mm of penetration to match the M6 gun of the Stuarts, so bear that in mind. But I think they'll still be strong regardless because they can take out light and medium armour whilst also pinning down infantry quite effectively. So they're going to wreak havoc in the back line at the start of the game if you can break them through, which you should be able to do with their speed. The other card that I've got is the Recon, the two-man Recon squads. These are good because they stay hidden and provide you with information in specific areas. And I'm going to be bringing them in with the M3 Scout, which is also a Recon vehicle. Better than the M20. It has the same gun, but the M3 Scout has extra armor and it's also better stealth. So it doesn't get spotted as easily as the M20, which is probably a good thing to have when you're trying to do recon stuff. So next up we have the Jeep. This is the first of the extra cards that you can choose from. This does have a 50 cal with 1000 meter range so it does outrange infantry MGs and therefore can be used as a fire support vehicle quite well but as soon as it does come in range it's going to get killed because it doesn't have any armor so bear that in mind. Then there's the standard four-man recon squad, uh, these are scouts, and you can also bring these in the M3 scout car, so that's uh, another choice instead of the recon if you prefer. I like to bring the recon because you get slightly more of them in phase A. And then there's the M5A1 recon Stuart. I reckon this could replace the M8s, but the M8s at the moment, their firepower for their cost is very, very efficient. But as soon as the M8s get nerfed, which I think they will, the M5A1 Recon will likely take over in the Recon tab. So bear that in mind. Next up we have the Infantry tab, and this is probably the smallest Infantry tab that we've seen in any division so far. We only have 5 slots available, so in this case I'm not bringing in any command units. The first card that I have is some engineers in the M2 half track. These are your nine man squads with two HE grenades. They're good at close range, that's what they're there for. Then I have a card of the armored rifles in the M3A1 half track. And these are better at range with their eight M1 Garands. And they also have bazookas though. So if you need to have them in an ambushing position, put them on return fire and uh, use them as a sneaky ambush bazooka squad. They, the M3A1 half track does give you a bit of meat to their bones in phase A, so I like having those half tracks available early on. Then in phase B, I have more engineers for again the close range engagements, bringing them in the standard M2 half track, then more armored rifles in phase B in the M3A1 half track. So that's just a combination that I'm continuing throughout the game and just providing myself with enough availability. And then in phase C I have the armored rifles in the M2 half track and none of my infantry has any vet um, with the intention of just allowing it to last me throughout the entire game because you do seriously lack slots to put infantry into. Now the other choices in the infantry tab are mostly the command units so we've got armored leader here which are probably the best choice because they have smoke grenades. Uh, then there's the armored leader with the SMGs these have short range AT grenades and then there's the engineers the engineer leader that is with the HE grenades so yeah I think the armored leader with the smokes is the best 
um, if you're going to take command in the infantry tab. There's also a card of the armored energy rifles, but what I don't like about these is their lack of availability. And I kind of find that like machine guns are made up for by your armor in this division. And so you're better off just investing into closer range infantry. So that is, in this case, the armored rifles and the engineers, as opposed to the armored LMG rifles, which don't have a bazooka. So, yeah, if these guys had a bazooka as well, then I think I'd take them. But since they don't, I have avoided them. The tank tab is really the bulk of the third armored division. And you can see that I have definitely tuned my tanks to come in a lot in the early game. But let's have a look exactly what I got here. So first of all, I have the Command M4A1. We have two of these in Phase A at the One Star Veterancy. And this is your standard M4 with the 90mm of penetration on the M3 gun and three machine guns, including 150 cal. They're really good fire support vehicles in the early game Shermans, and I don't think that's ever going to change. Then we have the M4A1 without Command. It's just your standard variant. Again, same sort of deal with the guns and the machine guns. Then we have the M4A176. Now you get two cards of these in the tank tab, and I'm bringing both of mine in phase A. The reason being is because I'm using Vanguard, I don't want to bump into things like Panthers and Tigers in the early game from divisions like the 5th Panzer and not be able to break through them. So I'm bringing in these both cards because they have the 130 millimeters of penetration on their main gun as compared to the M3 gun which has 90 millimeters of penetration. So these have some seriously good firepower at close range against things like Panthers and Tigers. And that's why they're there. Bringing in two cards, one star veterancy so that I can make them three star veterans in phase A. That's the whole idea. Then I've got a card of the Jumbos in Phase A. These are exceptionally strong at the moment with then 190 millimeters of frontal armor. They have the same guns as the standard M4s, but with that extra armor, super, super strong. And there's not much that can kill these in the early game or even in the late game for that matter. You're going to have to rely on something like a Pac-43 to get through these or the Panther Gs. A Panther G with like an APCR shell would have to be used. Then moving into phase B, I have the M4A375. These guys are extra armored compared to the M4A1. That's pretty much the only difference. They do have a bit faster speed as well, so there is that. Then I have a card of the M4A176 commands in phase B. Since you only get one in Phase A, I opted to bring these in Phase B to kind of supplement the fact that I bring both of my M4A176 cards in Phase A. Then I have a card of Jumbos in Phase B to continue rolling forwards with that really heavy armor. And then a card of M4A375s in Phase C so that I have some tanks left if things haven't already ended by Phase C. Other choices in the tank tab include the M5A1 Stuart. I think just because there's so many decent other choices, it just doesn't really have a space in the division at the moment. You can get the Stuart commands. These could be a choice instead of the command M4A1, honestly, um, if you didn't necessarily want to spend so much on your command m4a ones you can save a ten like 10 points then there is just like loads more cards of m4a ones but of course i have chosen the m4a 176s the jumbos and all that good stuff so there's your lot and honestly the tank tab is where it's at very important if you're going to be doing a vanguard battle group that you have at least one card of these m4a 176s in phase a carrying on to the support tab you can see that the first card that I have here is the Command M8s. Now since the infantry tab is so small and you're kind of forced away from infantry command, you have to supplement elsewhere. And that's where these Command M8s in the support tab really come in handy. So I'm gonna be bringing in these in phase A 
and they're going to be accompanying my infantry. That's the whole idea of having these. Then I have a card of supply in phase A, the GMC supply vehicles. Then I have a commander unit in phase A, and that's the only commander I actually have in this battle group because the idea is to win in phase A, or at least phase A and phase B. So I don't expect to bring in a second commander or have this commander killed by then, hopefully. <laughs> That's the idea. Then I have a card of the M2 half-track supplies. I've got six of these uh, coming in at phase B. I think it's important to rely more on the armored supply by having more of them in the late game, because you, know, you can only get one card of the M2 half-track supply, which does have armor as opposed to the GMC supplies, which don't. That's why I'm bringing the M2 half-track supplies in phase B. Other choices though, there are a lot of them in the support tab. We have the heavy flamethrower, which are your standard two-man flamethrower teams. Uh, they do have the four smoke grenades for 15 points. Pretty standard stuff. There's the M1917 heavy machine gun. Has 1,000 meter range. Pretty standard machine gun uh, for suppressing infantry. Then there's the 30 cal which has the same range and pretty much the same statistics. Pretty cool that both of them are actually in the game. Just a different model really, but they actually have quite a lot of options for their transport, so bear that in mind. Then there is the M8 Scott. Currently the damage on these is not that great with their HE doing only one damage. So I've kind of stayed away from these, just like I stay away from the uh, Panzer 3s at the moment with the howitzer guns. Then there's the M20 Commander unit. This is your Phase B command. There's the 50 cal infantry squads. Then you have the M4105 and the M4A3 105 mils, which are basically the same in a lot of ways, except from the M4A3 105 does have heat shells. You can see the 100 millimeters of penetration there. And those heat shells also have eight, 8 damage, so they're pretty damn lethal. If you can hit those at close range, then you'll be you'll be laughing. But, I mean, good luck hitting with 24% accuracy. The HE shells only do 2 damage at the moment, so yeah, I've been avoiding any, sort, any form of assault gun at the moment, but I reckon they will be buffed in the future. And then finally, there is the M475 Commander, which is your M4 Command Tank for Phase C but I don't ever really feel that there's a point to bringing Phase C commanders unless you're specifically going for a Juggernaut uh, battle group. That's just how it is at the moment. Next up we have the anti-tank tab and you can see that the first card that we have here is the Bazookas. You can get eight of them in Phase A with no veterancy so that's really really nice and they're only 25 points a pop so if you kill any form of tank they're going to be paying themselves off and that's really, really nice with a unit. And since they can come in with a Jeep, which has 105 km per hour on road speed, they can get to positions that can ambush expensive units early on. So that's what you want to be using them for early. And then like in the mid to late game, use them for ambushing capabilities. And I have two cards of the M1 guns in phase A. I'm actually bringing these in at uh, one star veterancy. Since the AT guns are quite low priority in phase A for this division or this battle group with the way that the play style is, these are more either to back up your pushes or cover open areas in the early game. So it's more of like just having the choice based on the scenario that you're left in per, on a per map basis. So this just gives me a bit more flexibility having these AT guns to accompany me uh, to cover those open areas against things like Panzer IVs early on. You won't want to cover the early the open areas against things like Tigers and Panthers though. That would be where you put these onto return fire or efficient shot and go for the ambushing kills. They do have 55% accuracy with the three star veterancy that does go up a little bit. So they can be very, very effective in an ambushing position. I've got another card of these in phase B uh, with uh, six available there with the one star veterancy. Other choices in the AT tab include the M10A1 destroyer 
The APR, APCR shells do have 165mm penetration, but you only have five of them. And then the standard AP on this gun is 130mm. And that is pretty much the same as the M5 gun that comes standard. So you've got APCR with 165mm penetration and then AP with 130mm. It's just dependent whether or not you want that on a hull or you want that on an AT gun that has potential ambushing capabilities. Now I find that if I'm relying on these into the mid to late game then I'm probably already lost. So that's why I only have like the M1 guns in the early game and their availability with their cheaper cost because at 65 points a piece I'd rather just be buying in loads of tanks at that point. The anti-air tab is quite a simple one. You can see in phase A I have the Bofors here and I've got them in phase A with no veteran C. So we get three of them. I'm not bringing them in with the M3A1 half track, which is tempting to do, but I find my justification for not bringing it is mainly because these I want to bring in as cheap as possible to just support my fighters in the air early on, as opposed to having a half track that can also help out. So that's why I'm doing that. Then our second card is the M15 CGMCs, and I'm bringing these in at phase C. And these provide really good cover in the air uh, for 90 points apiece. And since I'm going to be relying on my Bofors and Fighters and A and B, I won't need any extra AA in phase B, and therefore I bring them in phase C when maybe I'll be overwhelmed by enemy air force by then. So that's the justification for that. The only other choice in this tab is the M16 MGMC, which is uh, 450 cows. And these can be pretty strong, especially uh, with the range increase from Steel Division Normandy 44. Moving on, we have the artillery tab of the third armored, and there is a lot of choice here. So first of all, I have a card of the M21 uh, mortar carriers, these are very nice because in phase A they have 60 shells, HE shells. So they don't run out of ammunition very easily while still providing that good 81mm mortar cover. They also have 35 smoke rounds, which is the main reason that I bring them alongside the card of calliopes that I have. So these provide my mortar fire. Then I have the calliopes that are there to saturate any armoured targets or maybe even AT guns that the opponents have early on that will get in the way of my initial push. Now what's fantastic about, about Calliopes is they have 60 rockets. So what you can do is fire like a third of the rockets, stop it firing, then fire a ne another third somewhere else and another third somewhere else and pin down three different areas with just one set of rockets. So that's how I would recommend you use them in the early game. They are quite expensive, but they do line up very well with Vanguard deployment because they cost 150 points each and you get 150 points per tick in the Vanguard deployment type. So you can get both of these in very quickly to support your units on the push. And generally I would bring these in like first or second tick in order to support my push without having to purchase them from the beginning. And in phase B, I have four more of these. That's why I've got the extra supply in phase A and B because I use more, like most of my RT in phase A and phase B. And then in phase C, I've just got loads of M7 uh, priests. These have your standard five damage with the 105 mil gun. And they do have radios, so they can use corrected shot. Just basically, if your phase A and phase B hasn't gone good enough to like win you the game, like most Vanguard deployment type, battle groups that I make I do have some sort of like support built in for the late game so that I can kind of become that supportive player where I've kind of lost my pushing power so that's the purpose of these M7s. Other choices in the artillery tab include the artillery command units these are pretty cool uh, you can get 10 men squads with command it's good potential for infantry command if you can't find it in the infantry tab. Then there is the 60mm mortars which fire a lot faster than the 81mm mortar but have less firepower 
good for getting smoke down quickly, that's for sure. Then you have the Piper with off map. This comes in with 155 millimeter off map. Could be good for helping pin down an area early on. It does actually have reasonable suppression for the off map that it, that it is, but it's gonna get shot down quite easily since it is a very slow aircraft. Then there's the M3A1 OP with 105 millimeter off map. This off map is very lackluster for what it costs, so bear that in mind. Uh, then there is the choice of the M4A1 OP, which is more 155 millimeter off map. Uh, you do get the machine guns on the M4, but you don't get the main gun capability. Then there's the 155 mil long tom. This thing is a beast, an absolute beast with seven damage. Look how big that thing is. Absolutely nuts. So great sort of mid to late game artillery power if you want it. And then there's the M3OP with 203 millimeter off map. Currently the availability of these is crazy. You can get nine of them in phase C. Imagine bringing in nine of these and then just putting down nine artillery strikes with 203 millimeter off map all at once. That'd be pretty nuts if you could get there. They do cost 200 points a piece, and even with a juggernaut, that's like one a tick, which is pretty expensive, that's for sure. Uh, so, yeah, off map's pretty expensive in this division, and I guess that's why people tend to be relying on the Calliopes at the moment, because they can be reloaded and used again and again and again, as opposed to a supply a uh, off map vehicle which has a finite number of uses. Finally, we have the air tab, and there's a lot of choices here, that's for sure, but I don't think this division should be one that focuses on having a lot of planes in its battle group, unless you specifically tune a battle group towards that. Because there's so much stuff on the ground, like the M8 Greyhounds and the Shermans and the Calliopes, that can help you get the job done without needing planes. So for the most part, I've used my air tab to just provide air cover to stop myself being hit by enemy airstrikes. And on top of that, I have brought in the P-47s, which do provide decent ground support, but let's go through the units one by one. So first of all, I've got a card of the Piper L4 recon aircraft. These cost 10 points each, and they provide you with that extra like level of recon in the early game that allows you to spot what you're up against and, and give you time basically to react to it. So this will allow you to spot something like a panther or a tiger, which then you can change your play style in order to prepare for, or maybe make an ambush for, so that you can break it down and continue your push in the early game. Having this recon information I think is very important for this specific battle group. Then I have a card of the P-47D Thunderbolts, these have eight 50 cals, and at the moment they are incredibly strong at strafing. I reckon they'll continue to be strong, even if they get nerfed, but currently their damage is like really, really good, and uh, they're just all-round great aircraft. They do struggle a little bit in dogfights, especially against things like ME109s, because the turning circle's a bit larger, but... As a strafing aircraft and zoom and boom, they're really good. And they got the 680 km per hour speed. Following that up in phase A, I do have the P-51D Mustangs. These are the ones that you would use for your air-to-air -air specifically, as opposed to strafing runs that the P-47Ds are more attuned to. They still have 650 cows, so you can strafe with them. Infantry will get pinned down quite quickly, and so will um, AT guns. Uh, but yeah, they have that good agility allowing them to dogfight really quite well and in phase b i've got another card of these so all out with the fighters in the air tab no air to ground whatsoever other than strafing runs the other choices in the air tab start with the f6c this has 450 cows so reasonably good for taking on enemy aircraft and strafing ground forces whilst also providing the recon information the biggest thing you got to watch out for is that they lack the ammunition in comparison, but due to high lethality in the air, it's not as much of a problem as it was in Steel Division Normandy 44. Then there is the B-26B bombers with 20 45kg bombs, 
just a mediocre carpet bomber for the uh, mid game really since you can't get very many of them in phase A. Then there's the B26B with four 450 kilogram bombs. The availability of these is severely lacking so doesn't really give me motivation to use up a slot with them. You can get P51D Mustangs with 110 kilogram bombs if you prefer, like if you want your Mustangs to have that extra fighter bomber capability then these would be a reasonable choice but you do sacrifice of course the agility there. You can get P47Ds with rockets, they have 10 rockets on the wings so good for saturating targets with suppression. Won't really find too many kills but alongside those machine guns I, at the moment they are incredibly strong. You can also get P47Ds with AP rockets, so anti-tank rockets specifically for dealing with armor. And there's also a P51D Mustang variant with 450 kilogram bombs which is pretty legit honestly but I really do like having that agility for the air to air capability. But as I mentioned there's plenty of choice I just don't think that the availability for the most part justifies getting more cards in your air tab as opposed to other tabs in this division. For defense, this is quicker than usual. We only have four slots to fill, so I've got barbed wire, trenches, and two cards of 50 cows, and that is pretty much it. So as you may have noticed, the third armor doesn't really have anything new and shiny, but it does definitely have a lot of units that complement each other very well and can be a very strong force in the early game if built with a vanguard deployment type. I think what makes it so strong though is the fact that you get P47D Thunderbolts that are incredibly good at strafing at the moment but also the availability of Calliopes is very high in comparison to something like a Katyusha which did have to be nerfed because of its strong early game ability alongside the second guards so I think that the third armoured will get the same treatment and we will see this tuned down quite a bit but for now, an extremely strong early to mid game division that has a lot of synergy amongst its units. Anyway, that's it from me. Let me know what you think about my choices. I'll of course leave a battle group code in the description as always. But in the meantime, that's all. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Yeah,